I look forward to sharing my journey so far with everybody today. So um, yes, I'm at Red Beach School and I teach a composite year two, three class. And I've been back at school by the end of this year for the 18 months since the program. And um, what I wanted to share with you today was just my experience of being back at school and the things that have really worked for me about um, bringing science and you know, improving it and progressing with it at school. Um, and some of the challenges that I have come up against as well. So what I wanted to start off with was just getting back into it and how you settle in and get started on your journey. And it does, as the picture shows you, feel, you do feel a little bit like a fish out of water. And everybody told me about this and told me to take my time and settling in. And I didn't quite appreciate it until I was back in. So it was a little bit of a shock going back in. But um, just taking your time to settle in and to build up your leadership over time. You don't need to change everybody's ideas of science and approach to science overnight. You know, it's just slow and steady um, is the way to go. Because um, <clears throat> you want to have everyone on board with your change and making changes too fast can um, challenge that. So that was just a little bit of advice to get started. Um, it may be a little bit different for you guys as you'll be starting back at the beginning of the year, but I definitely found that I felt this way starting midway through the year. Um, so one of the first things that I did when I went back to school was um, I started a science club on a Friday at lunchtime, and this was in term four, so it was my second term back at school. Um, and while we were on the STLP, I visited Wilfrid School in Wellington. Um, it was for one of, one of the days that we had come down to Wellington for um, our curriculum development courses and we got a chance to go up to schools. And she, one of the ladies that had done the course, done the program, with, not with us, but previously, had done at Science Club and had found it to be really helpful to boost the image of science at school. And so that's where I got my idea from. And I did it for the whole of term four. The first um, half of the term I did it for with my senior classes, so years four to six, and the second half with the junior classes, years one to three. And so I organized fun, hands-on science experiments for us to do during lunchtime. And I found this with the kids absolutely loved it. And it definitely built up the profile of science at school. Um, so it's definitely a great option to give a try if you would like to. Um, so the next thing was starting my self-review of science at school. And um, so I just wanted to share a little bit about what my approach was with the students, teachers and the community, just to give you some ideas that you can change or use or um, yeah, use what will work for you. So for um, the student self-review, what I did was, because we were moving towards the science capabilities and seeing how children can actually apply science skills, um, I took on, we did a practical science activity, which is the viscosity race, which you may have done on your STL program. That's where I got the idea from. And we had two children from every class that were randomly selected, and they partook in this practical science activity. We videoed the sessions, and then were able to reflect on them at the end, seeing how our students were actually using the science capabilities, and were there ones that we needed to work on more, you know, where, were our, where were our strengths and where were our weaknesses with them. And that activity I found really helpful and it really highlighted what our students found challenging within the science activity and the things that we should move on with and other things that they were actually quite good at and were able to do really well at. Um, and so then I went on to teach a self-review and with that I did um, horizontal team meetings and I had a selection of questions which were assessing a variety of different things of, you know, our teachers' confidence in science, how they taught it, how they planned it, what the focus of their lessons were, how they assessed it, and what Science PD had worked for them in the past and that they found helpful. And I took it on more of a, dis we had discussion around the questions. Um, rather than having a questionnaire that they filled in. And I found for me that was, it was a more collaborative approach to finding out where the teachers were at and it gave me a really good understanding of where they needed support and what they found to be beneficial. And from that I found that we actually had quite a strong shared vision as a team already about where they thought our students needed to go in order to be able to be scientifically literate people. Um, 
then I went on to my community self review and this again I did it similar to what my teacher what I did for my teachers and my students we did sort of a focus group of a selection of parents throughout our school and we had some questions which we had discussions around and some videos that we showed them and we had a little bit of a practical activity as well and the findings of that actually really surprised me I thought when I didn't think my community would have as much to say about science as they did and they were really you know pro science and very supportive I did find getting um, my parents on board with the community focus groups quite challenging as it was term four and we have a big gala and we asked for a lot of parent help and so that was quite challenging um, but we did get some people that were really willing to participate and um, it was a really it was a big success one thing also with that is quite a few of the parents when they arrived were a little bit nervous about what what we were expecting of them um, and so it was just to put them at ease that we weren't expecting anything there was no right or right wrong or our answers and it was just to participate and share their views about science so that's just a little bit about how I did my self review so once I had finished my self review um, I then shared it with my teachers and with the staff in our PD sessions, which we which happen in our um, staff meetings, which are before school on the Tuesday, and um, sharing myself for review then gave us ideas as to where we would move forward with um, science at our school. And two, the key factors that we found from our review was that our students were definitely moving into the science capabilities would be beneficial for them. And specifically capability one and two initially, because we found that they, with their observations that they were using their um, full set of sensors to help them to support them with that and that um, when they were then going on to use evidence to back up their ideas they needed a lot of questioning and support in order to do that so we wanted to build that up and make them like natural for them to do that so we decided on um, focusing on our capability one and two for 2016 and then capability three and four for 2017 and the, why we decided on doing it in small clusters was to get to really give us an opportunity to get our heads around what those capabilities look like and really build them up in our students um, and to just make our changes quite slow and steady and on our program we had the wonderful Andrea Benwell and she created the um, resource that you can see on the screen which is thinking and behaving like a scientist and so I created a set of these for each of our teachers and it's just a great way for them to make connections to the capabilities in an easy way with the students and with the little captions that go with each of the capabilities observing and inferring idea explaining ideas using evidence can we trust this information can be shared in many ways is in um, language that's quite easy for the children to to understand and I use this with my class all the time with my year ones last year year twos and threes this year and find it to be really helpful and I know the staff have found that as well so that's a really great resource to to use what was quite important for us too is we have a school-wide inquiry model which you can see on the right there and it's a get it sorted use it and so bringing in the capabilities we needed to connect it to what we already had um, to make it successful and I did want to share when I actually did talk to my teachers for the first time at our staff meeting about the science capabilities and that we we're going to move towards them and make the change. Um, my first session of introducing them ended in complete silence and I think everyone was a little terrified that we were making this change um, and so I was a little worried when I finished that off but I came back the next week um, all eager to go and to turn them around and to get them on board and um, I shared an example of a science capability lesson I'd done in my class on floating and sinking, which I had got off the TKI re website, how it linked into our powerful learning, and showed them that it's actually exactly what they do within science, but it's just changing the focus into really building up that capability that rather than the knowledge, and that seemed to really help and make them feel a lot more confident and happy with the change. And I guess just to um, cement that shared vision of where we wanted to go, and challenge what we've done in the past in order to progress further with our science. So that's where we introduced the capabilities. Um, next, I moved, I'm gonna move on to sharing a little bit about how I've done my professional development, as it's really important with that change to actually be able to support the teachers and um, enable them to bring, 
in the capabilities. So all the PD sessions that I've done, I've made sure really hands-on practical with activities that, and resources that the teachers can directly use in their classrooms. I've tried to link most of my science capability um, PD sessions to the resources on TKI, as this gives the teachers a chance to familiarise themselves with the resource and explore how it can be adapted throughout our school and also where the resources in one particular context, how you can use the same lesson or progression of lesson in other contexts as well. And also make sure that there's lots of chances for integration of science into other areas and that we make those links as much as we can in our PD sessions. So a few examples of these are um, our, our teacher only days at the beginning of this year. We did a lesson very similar to what following the lesson progression of counting kura on um, TKI and we had some crabs and we did observations on them so we you know we observed them we inferred what we thought the different parts were for where they might live etc and used our observations as evidence to support that thinking and that, that inferences and this was really great the teachers absolutely loved it it was a very smelly experience but very hands-on and very exciting and I actually visited um, Alice Ho, who was part of um, supervising our course down at Wellington at our um, curriculum development courses, and she teaches at Birkenhead Primary. And while I was on the um, STLP, I visited her, and she was doing this throughout her school, and so I got the idea from her. And so, you know, that just highlights going to different schools and seeing what they're doing can really, you know, give you some great ideas. I would never have thought of this on my own. But um, yeah, very, very interesting sessions and really different and not what other pe what they'd experienced before, but everything was there within the resource for them to take away and to use. Um, I've also done at the top the rubbish and waste audit within our school because this year we've had an overarching um, idea, big idea, which is nurture our nature across our school and so trying to fit in with what we've already got going and support it but with a science um, focus um, and that brings in the observing and inferring and using evidence really really well. We also did the tomatoes the fruitful vegetable one that's on TKI and that was a really interesting session. Lots of discussion and different ways that teachers would do it and critiquing the way the approach to the lesson etc it was a really interesting session and we made links there to the matariki and to food and harvesting of food and also maybe not even link, not only distinguishing between fruit and vegetable but even matching some of our teachers went away and did ones in their classes where they match seeds with fruit and it was a great using evidence session. Um, we've also done the um, stacking colours which I know you may have done on your STLP program, and that was a really interesting hands-on activity as well. The year that we did that, which was the end of 2015, we were doing a market day, which is where each class does a big science focus towards the beginning of the year, and then they use their science um, to back up their technology, and they have to make something that then we sell at the market day. And so classes use this science to back up make creating lava lamps, snow globes with the different densities and even layer, layered ice blocks that you can see down the bottom there too. So it was trying to connect our science to as much of the other learning that was happening around us but with keeping the science focus and um, the integrity of the science as well. Um, and then this year um, a big project was Science Primary Week. So our approach to Science Primary Week was we had a full week focused in on science and its integration into all other areas of the curriculum. Our focus again was capability one and two. And um, a colleague in, who is in the senior school and myself, we planned out two units, a junior school unit and a senior school unit and provided all the resources for the teachers to use across that week. So the junior one was a marine unit based on the Counting Kura lesson and the senior school unit was a spider unit based on the white tail spider using evidence lesson on TKI and then we had lots of different activities that you could do around it. We also had a daily science challenge that a junior one and a senior one which each class worked on each day and they got points for it and at the end we had some prizes um, for the class that got the most questions right. 
And that was, the kids were really into it. They absolutely loved it. The first thing that they do in Science Week when they came into the class was to find out what the science challenge was and could they start working on it before school. So that was a really big hit. Um, and it was something simple and easy to organise and to to get going and to continue through that week. And I guess we could do it at another time of the school year as well. Um, and then at the end of um, Science Week, we had a community celebration to celebrate and share all of our learning. So at our school, we have horizontal community, or we have vertical community, sorry, which are a cluster of classes of different year levels, and we do lots of things together. And so at that, we all got together and we shared what we had learnt, and we had a combination of junior and senior classes so that they could share different learning with each other. And it was great to see the children being able to talk about their learning and having a purpose to their learning because they were sharing it with somebody else and making a difference to somebody else's learning too. Um, so these are a couple of photos and just to show you what sort of thing we did with the marine unit. So we did some observations with the year ones, twos and threes on squid, fish and crabs. And down the bottom you can see them doing their observational drawings on them. And down the bottom too, a resource that we've used a lot with capability one and two was, which is I notice, I think, I wonder, the I notice is bringing in your observations, I think your inf inferences, but always basing them an on an observation, which is where you're using evidence comes in, um, and how it links in with our inquiry process as well. And that resource is really, we found that the students were able to use it. You know, that's my year twos and threes writing on it themselves and sharing their learning. Um, we did, these are some of the observational drawings from my class showing what they thought squids looked like before and after. I kept my squid observation a secret, so they knew there were some secret visitors coming to visit us during Science Week, but they didn't know what they were. And it really built up the anticipation about them. And um, at the end of the day, one of the boys in my class went home and said that this was the best day ever. And that just showed how into it they were and how much they enjoyed it. I got some amazing writing about squid as well. So it was a great um, prompt for writing. Um, we then went on to do a marine meter square down at our at Red Beach, our local beach. And so this was bringing this continual marine unit all together. Um, so we went down, we did, collected our data, we came back, we got our pie charts, which come off the, the marine meter square website. They converted them into bar graphs and then they shared these with their buddies in the older classes. I really thought that, well, that doing the marine meter square down at the beach was a great experience. Um, I'd like to actually go back towards the end of this term. I plan to with my class to do it again and hopefully we'll get more and more of the classes at school on board. So we had all of the year one, two and two and three classes out there. Um, and our kids managed really, really well with the identification and the counting of it. They did find it a little tricky to keep on track the whole time because they got distracted by all the amazing creatures around them. But that just showed me as well how much they were into it and on board and just, you know, fascinated by everything they found. Um, before we went, I got together with all the year one teachers and the two, three teachers and we went to have a little trial because I knew, knew my teachers were a little bit nervous about going down there and doing it and what it involved, etc. So giving, you know, going down and giving it a try made them more at ease with what they were doing and supported them through that. So the senior classes did a spider unit and their prompt for it was spiders are annoying and dangerous and should all be killed. So the top two photos you can see there is a, there is a spider Island, which was in one of our classes and that the children watched and learnt about all week. They also visited um, the Weird and Wonderful um, unit at the Auckland Museum and that was really great experience and um, connected really, really well with their learning that they were doing as part of Science Week. Um, they also did some art that went with it because we tried to incorporate the literacy and the maths and the art all together so it was all part of an integrated unit. Right, then um, I also got funding from the Royal Society to do some sessions on the capabilities and the idea behind this was to give my teachers the chance to get their head around capability one and two and then to share back some resources with their teams. So it's a little bit similar to what we did on our STLP where we 
were assigned a capability. We taught a lesson and then we shared it back to our group. So our teachers were assigned capability one or two. They planned and taught the lesson to their class and then they taught the lesson to their year group team. And the things that I found to be helpful for us was the time, the time that it gave the teachers to reflect on the capabilities, to share the resources, but it was within school time. So they were released for half a day to do it. Um, and it, it really helped to develop the teacher's understanding of those capabilities. And you could see that by within the lessons that they were sharing, the discussion that was happening around each, each lesson. And um, in our team, for example, we had seven teachers which shared, and so now you've got not only your resource that you've just done, but everybody else's as well. So it's a huge resource growing um, activity. And there was lots of discussion, you know, it was able to ask questions and to, you know, critique different ways you might be able to do it. And um, I, it was specifically actually within cap with capability too. A lot of our teachers found capability two using evidence a lot more intimidating than capability one, observing and inferring which they could get their heads around and they understood it. And so several who were doing using evidence actually doing this process found it really helpful to get their heads around what it actually involved and found that it actually wasn't as tricky as they thought it was. And actually on reflection, I think that I would have done this half day release and the capability session, I would have liked to have done another one because it was so beneficial. So. If it's something that you would consider with your school, I would definitely recommend going for it. It was a really um, successful and beneficial um, activity to do. Um, and I think doing things like this, it's really important to then also thank your staff. And so, you know, after Science Week, I send little notes to the teachers and pop little treats in their um, pigeonholes just to say thank you for taking on this change and for putting all the effort that you do in. And the same with this, because it can be intimidating for a lot of people to share things that they might not be very confident in. So it's making sure that they get the recognition of putting that effort and, putting, and taking the risk to do it. Um, so these are a couple of things that the teachers shared. So we've got, we had earthworms using evidence. Where do earthworms live? One of the teachers brought a cockatiel in and compared it to people you know, to say are birds living as well if we are and what is our evidence to support it. There was quite a few that used, well, I encouraged them to use the TKI resources because it was an opportunity to get their heads around them better and to have a better understanding of them. Um, but it was a huge variety of different things and it was really quite interesting. The um, one at the top here, the using evidence, where, where do worms live? It's in, from a year one class and to um, figure out where the worms earthworms like to live best they had a big hula hoop and they put all sorts of things around that they thought that worms would live in one included a lego house that the children built and there was obviously some um moist sand and there was soil and there was um, flowers and there was grass and then they put a bundle of earthworms in the middle and over the day they observed where they went and by the end of the day they were all in the nice wet soil um, but the children were actually made got to make predictions and then record their results on their toe and it was a great way for a year one class to develop a, the idea of using evidence in science in a way that they could understand and that was visual and um yeah easy to understand a lot of them were very were hoping that the worms would go to the lego house but i think they knew otherwise um, so these are some of our senior classes that the resource of um, Garden with Science and using that um, within her classroom, one of our teachers, and then down the bottom throwing balloons, so having a balloon and then within it there was an, a water balloon as well, and then throwing it and trying to figure out what, how, by how it moved, what was inside, and um, I know she got some really interesting observations from that. Uh, and then one of our teachers also did some observing and inferring around hibiscus flowers and dissecting the flowers and illustrating and um, drawing them. So those, yeah, it was great sharing session and lots of different resources there for everyone to, to use now. We also took notes um, and photos during the sharing, the sharing session so that they could be put onto their um, criteria, registered teacher criteria. Um, so it's evidence of their science PD. Um, and then the last bit I wanted to talk about was 
our approach to assessment in science. So um, I was mentored by Ali Bull, and she created an assessment tool that you can see in front of you. And she's got it for level three and four and then level five as well. And so it's um, a little bit of a paragraph and it says, is your student a lot like Izzy? Quite a bit like Izzy, a little like Izzy, and not at all like Izzy. So it's establishing whether where they are within that level one and two. So that does cover four years, four, le four years of the curriculum, well, of, of school. Um, and so we've used this as a school, as a formative assessment. So for us as teachers to reflect on, are we providing the opportunities for our students to develop in this way? And then also with our reporting to parents, um, the language and the capability focus of our reporting to them. Um, and we found it to be a helpful tool. Um, we've stayed away from a progression within the capabilities only because we have progressions in a lot of area, other areas of our learning and sometimes it goes towards a little bit of a tick box and it's not and we don't want to do that it's more of an overall picture and a real focus on that capability and that skill base of it um, and so this is yeah assessment tool that we're using at the moment and we may change and adapt it over time but it's been very helpful to us at the moment um, Last page is just a couple of pictures of all the science that's been happening around the classes. And what I, what's blown me away the most, really, is a lot of the, the stuff that I've got up there, the photos that I've got up there, are, are of activities that teachers have gone out and organised on their own and got involved in. And so, you know, you give them the ideas and introduce the capabilities and you have the support there and then them going out and getting involved in a lot of different activities shows you know they built their confidence that they're building and um yeah it's great for science at our school so i think that's all i've got to share michael hopefully i didn't speak too fast thank you very much chrissy that was amazing the two words that came through for me, um, if I were to characterize your talk, was community. I like the way that you talked about your community of your school and also the way that you were leveraging off the community of the um, SGLP. And um, part of the aim of these uh, webinars is to help to build that community from across year to year. So that, that was really great. Um, okay. Can we hold off some questions until after Yako's um, done his presentation? And I um, invite you to stop sharing your screen, um, Chrissy, so that Yako yes. can start sharing his. But thanks a lot, that was great. No, that's okay. There we go. Cool. Yako, how are you doing? Yes, very really good. Thank you, Michael. You ready um, to go? I'm still here, yes. Excellent. Yeah. That's great. So, so we look forward to hearing from you. So from here, I, I guess I can just share my screen and... Um, and, and, and get going. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That uh, okay. uh, looks good. Your screen sharing, yeah. You can see all your applications. Okay, I can close them down. And if I just move this window, then maybe I can get to my presentation. You might see it there now. Uh, I think if you unshared your screen somehow, all I can see is everybody. I think you might, might have clicked the unshare screen button. Share screen. We back up. Uh, not at the moment. It's along the bottom of the screen. Have you found share screen along the bottom of the screen? Uh, just a moment, Michael. Right. I I can see my whole screen. Oh, I, I can see my presentation. Yeah, and. Um, on the Zoom page, you need to click the share screen sign at the bottom of the um, at the bottom of the Zoom screen. That's it. It's coming. I think I might have it now. Okay, there we are. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I guess you can go on to pre yeah present. That's great. Okay, you're on. Thanks. Right, you're still there. Excellent. All right. Um, first of all, I'd I'd like to well con congratulate Chrissy. Um, she's pretty much well. She said so much and. She had so much, I'd, I'm personally inspired, and uh, which makes me think that my presentation might be, might be lacking some ways. Uh, secondly, also, um, you mentioned, Michael, that I'm originally from South Africa. Um, today is actually the day that we, me and my family, celebrate um, 
10 years in New Zealand, uh, which, is, which is a very exciting time for us and uh, we feel, feel very blessed. Well, congratulations. If I'd known that was happening, I'd have baked you a cake. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> have, a, have a virtual cake. Oh, we'll have a virtual cake. Thanks for that. Yes. Right, and then um, I guess since, since I teach at a Catholic school, it's only fitting that I start my presentation with a with confession, with a bit of confession. And uh, so, when it comes to the nature of science, uh, it was sort of around September uh, of two thousand and fourteen. Um, we got an email, and and I think it was Jesse McKenzie at the time at the Royal Society offering uh, for people to apply for funding. I think it was up to about five thousand dollars. Uh, for funding towards building your curriculum in the nature of science. And um, typical of me, I thought, okay, so nature of science must be something to do with nature. And I know that we've got some sort of program going with, in, with Enviro schools. So maybe I can apply for things that support our Enviro school program. And, and that'll cover the nature of things. Uh, much to my, much to my surprise, uh, you know, it, it actually had nothing to do with it. And, and so when the, when the application came around to, to be on the SCLP uh, program, I think they actually thought, man, if there's one guy that really needs to understand the nature of science, it's, it's this guy. So um, get him onto the program as soon as you can. Uh, and then I'd like to think of as, as leveling the playing field. And everybody listening in tonight, um, you might might be able to identify with it um, as before you came to the program and started looking into the nature of science and the curriculum as such and the capabilities, uh, you might not have had the best of idea about the nature of science and, and what it involves. Um, so so that, that was my introduction to, to the nature of science. Then I came into the program, uh, had a wonderful phase one and a placing at the University of Waikato uh, with, the, with the School of Science and more particularly uh, working with marine um, marine scientists, uh, oceanographers, uh, spent six months with them and uh, spent time on on the program and also the leadership down in in Dunedin, which I'm sure most of the people listening in tonight uh, have recently come back from Dunedin, which was a wonderful experience. I'm sure you would agree. Um, initially, on on the slide we're looking at at the moment, uh, phase two, going back to school. I thought of typing up what worked for me. And I had to think about it again and realize that no, it is more of what worked for us. Uh, what worked for us as a team, what worked for us as a, as a, as a teaching staff rather than just me. And I, I think as we go along, you'll realize um, what that means, the, the more the us than the just me. And I would like to share tonight, probably not as much um, about all the different things we did, but more, I guess, practical steps for you going into leadership. Um, each of the people going back into schools. All right, so now I'd like to sh share some keys then to, sh to science leadership. Right, so key one uh, is to, to keep contact uh, during phase one. And um, you are sort of halfway through, through phase one and are starting to look back to, to go back into schools now. Um, so there's still time to, to catch up on key one, if you like. Um, the first point under that, uh, having regular school visits. Uh, I was, uh, my placement was in Hamilton at the university, as I said, and Cambridge wasn't too far away. And I live in, in Tiamutu, which is also not too far away. So I made sure that uh, whenever there's, there's PD sessions being held in, in other curriculum areas or there are any sp special events at school, I made sure that I, that I went back to school and, and touched base and always um, showed my face, you know, made myself available for, for different functions, made myself available for for things that were happening in the school. Um, even on the last day of, of the STLP program phase one, um, I flew back from Wellington on time to attend the production that night. Um, our school was in the production of Annie and I made sure that, that I was there, it took my family along. And, and I think it's important that the community and everybody else sees that, um, you know, this is not just a holiday. You're not, you know, not away having a good time and have forgotten about them. Um, also, every time I went back into school or if I'd seen someone in the streets or um, spoken to anybody about from school, I, I made sure that I shared my experiences and shared my stories and shared the wonderful time that I had. Uh, just to the, on, on the bottom right-hand corner, um, you'll see some, some pictures of drawings that um, 
the, these were from room two, which is, they are um, year one and two students. And th those were their drawings of what they think scientists look like. Um, and that we did in most of the classes in the school, uh, because students have a certain idea of, of scientists that they are these mad scientists in a lab, in a lab coat making up uh, potions. And as a school, we wanted to, to get students to think beyond that. Um, and you'll see later on how that is developed. Um, typically, we got, um, even at year five and six, even year seven and eight, we got typical the mad scientist um, drawings, writings about it. Uh, and that is generally the, the perception that, that children in our school had. The second key uh, is probably for me the most important one. And this leadership key, I guess, can be applied in any curriculum area, any leadership role that you might be in. It goes beyond just science. And in Māori, there's a saying called he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. And it's about people, people, and just people. And I think uh, looking back at your leadership course, also the, the, the book that you read, uh, the message might have come through quite clearly that it is about people and relationships. And I found that to be, to be uh, crucial um, in this case. I, from day one, I think it was very important for our principal to be at the very first session uh, on the opening day of the program back in January 2015. Uh, she came along and she attended and she got right there and then a very good insight into what was coming. And I kept contact with her as much as I could. Um, so therefore she was on board from day one and very supportive. Uh, with the staff, uh, I'd been teaching at the school for um, for four years at the time, and had built up a really good relationship with my team. Um, in the senior team, there's there's three of us, and also a really good working relationship with the rest of the staff. Um, and this was done through uh, also being in charge of health and PE. So I'm responsible for organising um, sports events and um, all the PE that that happens around the school. Um, in terms of staff development or professional development, I haven't been in that role at the time, um, but it really put me in good stead having had those, those relationships in place. Uh, with the students, um, building relationships with students, I would already had relationships with, you know, really good working relationships with, with students at year seven and eight level. And I could then go back and, and build relationships with, um, with students in other classes further down. With the parents, um, we've got quite a, a supportive community and uh, a community that have got quite a few scientists in, in amongst the community, people that are very interested in science and are very supportive of our school. And I made sure that, that I kept contact with them. Uh, during the time that I was on placement, I was interviewed by one of the board members. Uh, she did an article which was placed on our school website and also um, in, our, in our newsletter. And through that, I could, I could explain what the program was about, um, what I'm learning, what I'm intending to bring back to school, and the changes they can expect um, to happen at school. Um, unfortunately or unfortunately, you still had parents that, that would meet you in the street and say, oh, are you enjoying your holiday? And thinking that we're on a, on a big cruise, um, there, there could be that perception out there, but but that's just par for the course. And I think probably most importantly is, uh, is your own family. You know, you can never under, underestimate the, the sacrifices they make um, while you're on this program. Um, for us as teachers, it is, it is a wonderful opportunity, um, but there are sacrifices made. And I would, you know, my wife and my children have been wonderful, um, not only through the six months of phase one, but right through, very supportive and understanding of, when I had to spend some time at home working on science leadership, um, very supportive. Right, moving on to the third key um, is timing. Um, and I, I think Chrissy also mentioned timing. Very importantly to settle in. Uh, we were told by some of the previous um, fellows or previous participants on the program that you shouldn't rush things. Take time to settle back into school. Um, of course, from our program, we settled back in well, we got back in in July, uh, which would, would be the second half of the year. So you have to pick up a class at that time halfway through that have gotten used to a teacher and the way a certain teacher manages a class. Um, so you have to get used to that. Um, and therefore, you shouldn't put yourself under too much pressure um, 
I think in, in most of the people listening in tonight, you'll be in a situation where you start off the year, which might be, might be better. Um, but it's important to give yourself that time. Also then to, to start slowly. Um, and I had the wonderful opportunity of, um, of the fact that in the Catholic school, we have religious education classes. And because I'm not Catholic myself, I, I don't teach um, religious ed education. I am Christian. Uh, but I most often end up uh, getting one class in, in the rotation. And so therefore, sometimes I take them for physical education. And at the time, in term three and four of 2015, I got to take them two afternoons a week for science. And I just use this time to really just experiment and take time out to, to throw a few party tricks at them and see whether it works. Um, I didn't go into to very much depth, but it was just for me, an excellent springboard to, to test the experiences that I had, to share some stories with them and get, get the platform going, get, get the, the conversation going. Um, I deliberately kept um, the professional development. I said I would only start that in term four of, of that year of 2015, because as Chrissy mentioned, um, you would go back and you would start with a self review to give you baseline data of where your school is at, your students and your, your community and your teachers uh, to see where they're at and therefore you can gauge where to start them off with. Um, so I started PD back in, uh, sorry, uh, PD in, in term four, 2015. Uh, you must understand that when you go back to school, you will be competing with, with other school priorities. Uh, at the time, our school had signed up for a teacher-led innovation fund on a boys literacy writing project, which was and still is a major focus in our school. Um, in the meantime, a maths program has come along, the ALIM program, um, which has also taken major time. We have, have embarked on journeys with Te Reo and Te Kanga Māori. Uh, so the point I want to make is that there will always be, you'll always be competing for, for um, time, for um, professional development, you'll be competing for teacher time, you'll be competing for, um, for priority. Um, so be, be prepared for that. Um, but just know that if you've got your relationship right, and, and if, your, if your staff and especially your principal can buy into what you can bring to the school, you've got that battle halfway won. Then when I started the PD in, in term four of 2015, I I knew that it was really important because capabilities was, was something really new to all our teachers. Um, I really had to put some context around these capabilities. And I decided to do that through sharing experiences that I had. Um, and I must say, when I started the, the placement, I had no idea of what these capabilities meant because it was only on a website. It was shown to us by the curriculum development team, but it had no context for me. And I couldn't make any links to what the scientists are doing on a day-to-day -day basis or when they go out and do field work, um, none of it made sense to me. I couldn't see any connections. And it was only once I started, uh, once I had a few experiences with them out in, out in the field, this was with PhD students uh, doing their field work or gathering their data, uh, and attending a few conferences um, at the university that I could realize the processes that scientists go through and the thinking that scientists apply. And from that, I could, I could start to form ideas of, you know, why scientists think in certain ways and why they do processes in a certain way and why they use certain tools. And that for me could make up a story. And you might've have, might have, uh, been taught at your course in, in, um, in Dunedin about, about narrative or telling stories to explain or to put, put context around things. And I think that has really worked very well for me because I could link it to experience that I had and therefore make sense of it for myself um, before I could share it with others. Uh, practical party tricks. Uh, of course, you were taught uh, quite a few really interesting um, experiments that shown quite visually and um, some really interesting experiences. And I came back to school and sometimes just at lunch times or before school, I would, I would just set up something on the bench and get the conversation started. Nothing major, just very basic experiments, um, but get, get teachers um, interested, get them curious first. 
and then get students um, interested as well. I think the danger is there that that um, if you don't plan it very well, you can quickly run out of party tricks, unfortunately. But just being aware of so key for really to have a context around it. And I'd encourage you before you finish your placement to make some notes and try to see um, the connections between the capabilities, the description of the capabilities, and what you've seen uh, from the scientists that you work with. Can you draw comparisons? Can you um, put up stories for yourself? Can you, you know, put, the, put it into a narrative uh, that you can present in a slideshow to put, to put context around it? Key five then, uh, a shared vision. And uh, this going, going back to the leadership um, course again, very important that it is not your journey, but it is all of your journey. It is about taking everybody else on board. It's about everybody being on the same walker. And uh, again, that comes back to relationships. Um, if you're going to force people to get onto that walker with you, you're going to have trouble. Um, but if, if you do it in a gentle way and it's, and it's, an, inviting, um, it's an inviting approach, you, you will get that buy-in. Um, again, the, my point about uh, developing a school-wide curriculum that worked for us. Um, this year, we, we were, I mean, I was very fortunate and we were very fortunate that there was a major focus on, on science. It got absolutely great priority and therefore a school-wide focus on thinking like a scientist. And we really went all out to understand what scientists think like. Uh, through that, I let teachers plan their own programs in syndicates. Um, teachers did their own things, but we still had a focus on capability one. Uh, we just started with capability one and through that lens um, gave students different experiences and built on, on understanding their capability. Um, and just getting back to the being on the same walker, if you're interested on the right hand side, you might see a, an image there of two scientists uh, on a boat. And this is quite a special boat, which um, can do electrofishing. So you might see the prods on the right and the left hand side of the driver of the boat. Uh, and these send electrical currents into the water. So it basically, it shocks the fish uh, momentarily and they, uh, so they are paralyzed for a few seconds. They come up to the surface and you can actually um, scoop them out with a net. So this is koi carp that we caught at the time uh, near, near Te Kaufata. And so the koi carp is used for, for research. Um, and some scientists are even thinking of developing some medicine from, from the scales. Anyway, that's just a by the by. And I thought it might be an appropriate image for being on the, on the same walker. Uh, a, a time to lead. Um, I must be honest with you, at times you will feel like you're between a, between a rock and a hard place because even though I'm very fortunate to work with very experienced teachers, um, it's people that sometimes have got strong opinions and, and they are valid opinions because they are experienced and, and they know what, what works and what doesn't. Uh, you must accept the fact that you, you have got an agenda, uh, you have got um, responsibilities toward the, the Royal Society and reporting. Um, so sometimes you've got to decide between uh, what is worth pushing and what is not, what is going to um, to get in, in the way of your relationship with that person or with your team or with your principal. So um, sometimes you've got to, got to, you know, take the hard line and, and just say, well, this is how it's going to be. Um, in one meeting I had with my principal, um, she quite clearly told me that, you know, it, it really is important for, for me to take the lead and to say, well, this is how things are going to be done and to do my homework beforehand. Yes, it is nice to, to have a shared vision, uh, but at times you really need to be, to be prepared to, to stand up and, and um, just put it in, in front of teachers and say, well, um, this is what, what I see where things are going. Key six um, would be to celebrate success. Uh, I've pre previously mentioned thinking like a scientist. Um, I will, you know, again, we were very blessed that, that it was a whole school commitment. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I bought um, swan plants and we all looked at the monarch butterfly and the, uh, the cycle that the monarch but butterfly goes through. This became a massive success for our school. 
became a massive integrated um, whole school unit where we had some excellent writing, observational writing coming from it, observational art drawings that were done. Uh, it even, even ended up being um, at an assembly, we had a year seven and eight group um, portray the life cycle of the monarch butterfly in a drama skit. And they made up their own props um, and the rest of every single person in that hall could understand the life cycle. And for me, that was a wow, a wow moment to know that, that something has stuck. These students have, are really motivated and, and could in many different ways e explain their understanding or the observations that they made. We also had science rotations in syndicates. Um, in the junior syndicate, there are um, four different classes and they organized sorry, themselves into, into rotations, and the same in the senior school, where each teacher would prepare um, lessons, and students would rotate around, and their teacher would get to, uh, I guess, re refine their practice um, every time that the, the class came, came past. Um, by the time we got to reporting to the Royal Society, of course, there's, there, there are a few um, reporting points, and one of them was the mid-year report, or the mid uh, program, mid phase two report. And the way I went about it was I took it to a staff meeting and I asked staff to, to almost draw up a brag sheet um, where we could include all the good things that we've done throughout the year. And this I think was not only a, a motivating factor, but it was really important for, um, for us to see as a staff how much we have accomplished. And just that whole collaboration, it was mentioned again today during the meeting, how wonderful it was to, to be able to get everybody else on board and celebrate together. Um, over the last two terms, term three and now term four, in our senior school, we, uh, we usually attend the Waikato Science Fair, um, where two or three students might take the the entries after a semi-final our school would take their entries to the Waikato Science Fair. This year we decided to have a similar science fair but have it in-house and therefore students are still working on their science investigations and then we will have a sharing day in week four of term four. Uh, the amount of learning and the capability shown during these experiences are just mind-boggling. I just can't believe how students have come along um, in making observations, in uh, gathering data, in um, you know using evidence, in conversations with each other, drawing up hypotheses. It was just amazing to see. And one moment that I'd like to highlight is uh, I was helping a young boy with an experiment and he was working all by himself. And this is generally a, a difficult student to have in class. And just that moment when he told me that, you know, Mr. Hull, I never thought I could be a scientist and look at me, here I am doing my own experiments. You know, that for me was, was that full, going full circle from thinking as a scientist, a person in a lab coat, a mad scientist working on these potions to this year five student now knowing that he can be a scientist himself. And he was actually thinking and they're all thinking like scientists. That for me shows that, yes, we have, have um, got, got success here. I was also asked um, towards the end of last term to write up an article for Kete Korero um, magazine, which is a Catholic uh, newspaper, which comes out, i um, pretty sure it's one, one, once a term, uh, which gave us the opportunity to celebrate. Um, I made sure in that article that I acknowledged every single teacher and the work that they had done, uh, which, shows, which shows my appreciation of the work they've done and I think it is a really good opportunity to showcase our school and, and the wonderful things we've done. Um, just being able to present this webinar tonight, again, is, is celebrating success. Uh, it, is and it is an amazing, amazing privilege for me to be able to talk to you tonight. Um, and if I think how far I've come 10 years ago to tonight being able to share uh, what I've been able to do in leadership is, is just a blessing. Um, also today, I, I led a staff meeting again, and that was um, looking towards the future. Um, and I was able to to treat the staff to drink, you know, juice and and chocolates and bars and so on. Uh, 
and I made it very clear that I would not have been able to put together a presentation for tonight's webinar without each of their input. Uh, people under your leadership need to know how valued they are, um, and you can't stress that enough. So really important to, to celebrate success with people. Our next slide is, this is in our foyer in the, uh, I guess in, a, in our reception area, uh, where you can see again the, the drawings they made of scientists and the short write-ups of scientists. Uh, you can also see the, um, the posters of the different capabilities and some of the drawings or the artwork that was done on the monarch butterfly and some of the write-ups that are done. Um, these sort of displays are up in every class, um, but I think it's, it's an excellent showcase of, of the work that has been going on. Uh, just some of the pictures of students carrying out the investigations, two senior boys um, measuring or testing the, the glue strength, I guess, of, of different kinds of tapes. Uh, and down at the bottom here, sort of junior school students seeing, looking at um, flight and, and the teacher really getting into practical hands-on experiences for students. Looking ahead, um, today in our staff meeting, we spoke about um, the purpose for assessment and the tools that we could use. Um, I think in assessment, it really is important for us to understand why we assess. Uh, if we're just assessing because someone says we have to, then I don't see the point. And personally, well, as a staff, we don't see the point. We need to be able to say, well, what do we want to do with the data? What do we want the data to show us? And from my understanding, uh, in years one to 10, the ministry only requires you to report on the nature of science strand. Um, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong. So therefore, we have decided that our assessment will be around um, assessing the capabilities as such, and we can, uh, and there'll be a big focus on self-assessment and peer assessment by students. Um, we, we want to encourage links with the community as much as we can, and we have got some parents that are involved with WinTech. Uh, they've approached us and they, they would really like to get involved um, from, from the technology side of things and would like to support us there. Uh, we're also looking to next year um, get young engineers. It might be a program um, that might be in different areas as well, but we want to make those links to, um, to, to technology and, and see how we can um, bring that across. The, the final report towards the end of the year, I will be, um, I guess, doing more reviews, so therefore assessments towards the end of the year as to see how we've come along as a school. And that'll be a major focus um, for the rest of the year on my release days. Um, and I'd like to finish off with the 11th commandment, um, and thou shalt have fun and plenty of it. And it was from the outset, I say to teach as well, if we're not going to have fun along the way, then we should not do it. And I'm all for fun, and Chrissy knows me a bit better. Um, it really is important, was important for me, and still is, that if you're in teaching, um, there has to be an element of fun every single moment of the day. And if you can't have that, then, then you're in, in, in the wrong place. Uh, so therefore, I'd, I'd really like to thank you for listening to me tonight. I, I realize that my presentation might have been slightly different from Chrissy's in terms of I didn't go into that much detail as to what we did, but more uh, looking at the different keys. And I'd be more than happy to share this presentation with whoever is interested later. So thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jaco. Well, we've had a real feast tonight. Um, two contrasting views of um, going back into school after the um, phase one. Um, and I really appreciate both of you, how much you showed your leadership skills, how much you've emphasized both of you, the importance of working with other people, working with the community. Um, are you guys um, happy to answer some questions if we throw it open now? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I just wanted to mention, Michael, Yako, that was amazing. Really interesting. It's even given me some more ideas for what next. Thank <laughs> so you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, um, I would just like to say that, you know, I found you both so valuable to listen to. You've actually really inspired me. Um, it's been amazing tonight. Um, would you be happy to share your PowerPoints just to help us along the way or I don't know you guys were great um, yeah really really thank good. you <laughs> awesome well, 
by all means, th thank you, Lorraine. Um, you, you're welcome. Um, Michael, I, I've shared, of course, my presentation with you on, on, um, on Google Docs, mm. on, on Chrome, and yeah, please feel free to, to share with everybody that there was on, everybody that's on the program and any, anybody that, that listened in tonight. That would be I, really lovely. I've already um, indicated that I've recorded this session and I'll be putting it up on the um, uh, RSNZ Science Teacher webinar channel, which um, is mentioned in the group chat on the, on the right-hand side. Um, but if um, either of you guys, Jaco and Chrissy, if, if you send me your PowerPoints, I can make sure through, um, uh, through Jen that they can get circulated. Okay. Yes, I can share mine too with you, Michael. Oh, that All right. Would be amazing. And Chrissy, I'd yeah. love to come and visit you at school. I, I've been trying, but um, yeah, so I'll contact you and hopefully get up there. I know a few of us are trying to. Yes, you're most to. welcome. I know yeah. Tina's been in um, contact and last term yeah. was a little crazy. So we've got yeah. <laughs> good term to go and no production. So I'm sure we can work it in. <laughs> It'll be cool. Lovely. Yes, no, definitely. <clears throat> okay, guys, any more um, questions? Just a reminder that if you're not actually talking, maybe mute your um, microphone so we don't get side noises and stuff. Um, Chrissy? Yes. I, I um, just had a question about the self-review that you were talking about. Um, you mentioned that you got two students and videoed them completing a task? Yes. So, so you know, who, was, who was teaching? I, I, I just think I missed a little bit of that. I didn't quite, okay. I wasn't quite clear. It may have been my explanation as well. I'm sure not. <laughs> um, and so what I did was um, we took two students from each class. And so, yeah. for example, in our year one um, team, we've got five classes so I had 10 children and we did the little activity together so I taught it along with um, one of my associate principals and so um, and we just sort of went through the activity through our questioning and got the children involved and got them to give us all of the ideas of how we were going to carry out the experiment and what we needed to think about and make predictions and find out um, you know, because it's a little viscosity race, who, which liquid won at the end and why we thought it and was it what we expected. Um, and so we did it like a little mini lesson and we did film it and there was the two of us that were running it and going through it. And we did that at each year level. So year one, year two, year three, year four. And we, we have a composite five and six last year, but we decided to do them separately as well. Okay. Does that make a little bit more sense? Yeah. So did you do the same activity with each year group? Yes. Yeah, so we did exactly the same experiment with each year group. We did slight differences in that wow. when, because um, it's a selection of liquids and you, we did observations about them and then we said we were going to race them and which one did we think would win and why. And yeah. with our younger ones, we actually had the liquids there so they could actually make, because we didn't tell them what yeah. they were initially, but they could make the connections. Whereas with the older children, we didn't. Okay. Just to, to see their different understanding of it. Right. And so then you use the video um, yes. to... Um, sort of learn from and see what you've done well and what you hadn't? Or did you show that to your staff? Um, well, what we did is we, we then used our video and actually reflected on the session as a whole. And we decided, well, we, we um, thought, well, how is our level of engagement and participation at the different year levels? And oh. how were they using the different capabilities? Okay. And specifically capability one and two, but all of them as well. And then, um, for example, when we looked at the engagement, our year ones, twos, threes, and fours had a high level of engagement and were really enthusiastic. And it dropped a bit at, level, at year five, and then it peaked up a little bit more at year six. And that was a really interesting thing that we hadn't really predicted. Right. And so we could then share that with our staff so that they were aware that we had that dip there and how, how could we what could we do to help those children to be more engaged but also as it was a one-off activity yes. um, and you know could that have affected their level of engagement and they were also with you know children that they may not normally be really comfortable sharing with as well so right. it's not clear-cut but it does give you quite a good indication of you know how engaged they are and how they were applying those capabilities 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot clearer. And yeah. I also had another question. Um, yeah. um, you mentioned that you had a half day release for the yes. teachers on your staff. Yes. So that, that was with, um, we did that um, term two. And so yeah. we had a half day released and during that half day release, they then shared their capability lesson that they had done with their class with their team. Okay. So I assigned them either capability one or two, and then um, they taught a lesson in their class yeah. and then shared that with us. And we actually did it practically like we were doing our PD session so that we all got to experience it as well. And that was probably one of the most beneficial things that I've done because it gave teachers the opportunity to explore them on their own and then share it. And um, we didn't put it, I didn't say you had to film it or anything like that, right. but some of them did and they shared you know, student voice while they were doing it. And it was just really beneficial for the teachers, but also as resources for us. Right. Okay. So they um, taught a lesson um, before this half day release and then came back and sort of reflected, uh, taught it again to the staff and then reflected all together. Yes. Yes, exactly that. And did you, um, did they teach it to the whole staff or just to their teams? Just to their teams. All oh, right, just to teams. Yeah, okay. So it was quite specific to the year level. Okay. And I think also some of our teachers, even within our session, were quite um, apprehensive about sharing. And so to a smaller yeah. audience, that was quite beneficial. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks. That's all yeah. my questions. Oh, and we are actually going to do that, what we did for the self-review of the practical science activity. I'm going to do it again this term with a slightly wow. different activity, but hopefully with the same children. And then it's a point of comparison. Right. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. No, that's okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks, Tina. Um, any more questions for Yako or Chrissy? Or thoughts or reflections or feedback? Can Jill. I just ask Yako a question? Um, the, when you talked about having the brag session or your final report with the other teachers, what sort of things did they throw in and, and what? how did you put that into your report? Right, so the, the break session we had, this was for the, the mid, um, mid phase two report. And it was really, uh, I tried to, in, in the report, include um, the observations that I made going into classes. Uh, but there's no way that you, you can catch, capture just even by photographing uh, what's on the walls or photographing even just walking into a class during a session what is actually happening there. Yeah. Um, so I, I had um, for each teacher in, in, in each room, they listed uh, probably all the different experiences that, that they gave students. And so therefore, by each one of them... Um, typing into a Google Doc, um, yeah. that could made up a quarter of my report right there. That's um, a great idea. It's a fabulous idea. And I quite I'd, agree with that, Yako. I would like to adapt that, we'll adopt that for the end of the year report. Mm. You're most welcome. And, and you know, it, it, um, yes, it makes life much easier for you uh, because, as I said, you don't pick up on everything. And secondly, um, it, it's an excellent reflection exercise mm. for these these students, these teachers actually realize, man, look at all the stuff that we have done. Look at all the good teaching. And I think yeah. it also shows quite clearly the buy-in that you have from staff across your school, which is when you think about it, us as leaders, we're trying to pull all these people in and get them involved. So to have that actual, as well as student voice, you've got teacher voice in your report is brilliant. Yeah, I um, thank you. I'd, yeah, I'd, I honestly think that in, in this case, you know, um, for me, the, the teachers is, is number one. It, it might sound really skewed, um, but if you're not going to get teachers on board, um, you won't get, get the children the, the best mm. teaching they can get. And, mm. and therefore, um, you know, in, in, any, in any curriculum area, if I were ever to move up into middle or senior management, uh, for me, it will always about, be about, right, so how can I make life easier for, for the teachers? It uh, doesn't matter what the subject area. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yet another example of um, the power of the community of the um, STLP program. Well done, you guys. Thank you, Michael.
Thank you, Michael. And thank you, everybody listening. And, and from my side, um, yeah, congratulations on, on what you've achieved so far. And, um, you know, all the best of luck for going back into schools. Um, just know that, that you are not all of a sudden the science expert. Nobody expects that of you. Um, and just know that it's a journey for everybody. Uh, and don't ever be hard on yourself. Um, remember, as my principal uh, has commented a few times now, um, as, as the lead teacher for science now, I don't have to be the expert. I'm just the catalyst. I'm the catalyst for, um, for great things that have happened. And again, I'd like to take it away from myself. I'm, I'm not taking any credit here. It's, for me, it's just blessings. And it is people that have, that have you know, through relationships, relationships have decided to, to come on board. Very well said, Yako. Are there any more um, comments or thoughts before we uh, close off for this evening? Uh, hi, everyone. Helen here. <laughs> I would hi, like... Helen. Hi. <laughs> I very much appreciate having two different viewpoints of the same subject delivery. Um, I think people have asked most of the questions I was thinking about. I will no doubt think about more once this webinar has finished. But I have made about three pages of notes. And, Jakob, don't apologise. I got quite a lot out of what you had done. Uh, yes, it was different to Chrissy's, but it was equally as valuable. And I've got a lot out of both of them. So thank you to both of you. Thank you, Helen. It's been a pleasure. Mm, thanks a lot. Um, what I just want to do before we go is um, to share this screen just to celebrate um, Yako. Can you see that cake? I can see the cake. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, yeah well, let's look. celebrate your 10 years, mate. And, and thank you so much for, um, you know, for your contributions. Great. Thank you. And, it's been my pleasure. Uh, is any uh yes yeah, so, so this is the last one of the year um because i'm off um, overseas on wednesday until um, mid-december um so the next webinar will be um probably term one next year but in the meantime i wish you all um you know best of luck and um yeah uh, have a lot of fun with science and uh, with your practice and with sharing um, and with your communities and, and thanks again and especially thank you, Chrissy, and thank you, Yako. It was a really excellent session. Cheers. And on that. Pleasure. Thanks. And Michael, before you go, where can we get the recording from? Sorry. If you look on this, if you look on the group chat on the right hand side. Yeah. Can you see the group chat? Yes, I can. Okay. Well, um, from me to everyone towards the bottom. Um, the YouTube channel that it will be on is the RSNZ Science Teacher Webinars channel. Thank you so much. And there's about um, a dozen um, webinars that go back for oh, about four years, but some of the earlier ones I've got to redo because they lost the sound. That's so cool. It's a little yeah. bit like Charlie's Angels, isn't it? Well, we, you know, we're all talking and you're the sort of like... We're the angels, and you're the leader. I'm the, de I'm the, I'm the devil. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm gonna sign off now. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll end the meeting now, unless anybody else has got anything else they want to say. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for hosting it, and uh, happy holidays. Well, thank yes. you very much. Cheers. Have Goodbye. a great trip, Michael. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll try and post something on the Facebook pages while I'm overseas. <laughs> If I'm <laughs> okay, cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.